Is it worth using a firewall in the Linux? I'll give you the TLDR version first and say, for the average home user, no it is not. Now this may come as a bit of a surprise, especially if you come from Windows, where you're absolutely encouraged to use a firewall, even to the point of buying one. But uh, yes, uh, companies that sell those products will really encourage you that you do need them. I'm not here to sell anything, so I will hurl as much abuse as I want at those products. Anyway, the reason for using a firewall is if you are running a service on your system that you wish to control the remote access to, remote access from your own internal network or over the internet. Now, for the most part, the firewall functions on your network are carried out by your router. This protects your border, protects you from a certain level of attack, but at some point you may want to poke a hole through it to access a port on your internal systems. And that is where you may need the firewall to have a better level of control on those internal systems. In Linux, we have a few different firewalls. Ubuntu has the uncomplicated firewall, UFW, and the graphical user interface for it called GUFW. Debian has NF tables. Red Hat, Fedora, and CentOS have firewall D. And underpinning most of those systems, with the exception of NF tables, is IP tables, which is built into the Linux kernel. IP tables is a very difficult system to configure, hence there are products like UFW to make this process simpler. But to get an understanding of why a firewall is really necessary, we need to understand how computers communicate. Now there's three different protocols they mainly use. We have ICMP, which is for basic messaging. It's not really for sending data, more for things like, say, pinging the computer and getting a ping response, just to say that the computer's alive and able to respond. And for sending data, there's TCP, Transmission Control Protocol. This is a little diagram of how it works. So say we have Bob who wants to talk to Alice. Bob would say, hello, I would like to talk to you, Alice. And if Alice wants to communicate with Bob, she will say, okay, let's talk, Bob. And Bob replies with, okay, thanks, Alice. And the technical explanation of that is sin, sinac, ac. Now, if Alice didn't want to talk, she would actually reply back, saying as such, no, I don't want to talk. Or she would actually send a reset packet. UDP can also send data, but it is far simpler in that it's not two-way at all. It is just, say, like one person talking to another, but without actually looking to see if they're understanding. So we've got the computer on the left saying, are you getting? And the computer on the right, well, why would it even be responding? It goes, I don't care, but send it faster. Now TCP and UDP can run services on different port numbers. And the port numbers run from 1 to 65535, with the first 1023 being taken up by certain services. And in order to open one of these ports, you would need elevated rights on the system. So there's quite a long list of things here that uh, some of these things are probably long gone now, but uh, no, not all of them though. Some of these uh, programs are still around. Now the remaining ports from 1024 to 65535 are known as ephemeral ports. They can be used as outgoing ports for starting a communication or have certain services on them. And the list I'm looking at here is registered ports, so they have some sort of service assigned to them. But yeah, that list doesn't go on forever. Where's it go to? Uh, well, actually it does. It goes on quite a long way. 47,000, so yeah. So how do we know what ports we have open on our systems? Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to use a couple of different virtual machines. I'm using a basic Ubuntu virtual machine here. So I'll type in the command ss and dash n. I want numeric information. I don't want any resolutions here. I want to know about listening ports, dash L. I want to know about TCP, T, UDP. And I want PID information or process ID information. There's a list of what I have open on this system, but it's not quite as simple as it's open up to the world. We have a couple of different IPs here. We have 0000, 000 and 127.0.53 well, and one. And we have an asterisk. We also have colon colon one. So anything starting with 0000, that is listening to the world and available for communication. 
although it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to respond with anything relevant, or could even be used as a point of attack or for leveraging an attack. Anything starting 127.0 is OpenSea local system only. It is a loopback. There seems to be quite a few things. Now, I suppose the one that really caught me out was 1716. We have process ID 1596. So what is that? Well, you can use PS dash capital A pipe grep 1596. That's a program called GJS. GJS Ubuntu. Well, apparently that's the GNOME JavaScript bindings. I don't know how it can be leveraged remotely, but yeah, from what I understand, it is actually available. And I'll demonstrate how you can confirm that these services are indeed available. For comparison, I've got Pop OS with a few different things installed. Now that's no good, I can't read it that way, so I might drop the PID information. And just go for the listening for TCP and UDP. So I have ports open and services running on 10,000, 80, and 22. That is Webmin, Nginx, and SSH respectively. Now to actually confirm this via a program called Nmap. You'll need to install this on your system as it's not generally installed by default. So I'll do a scan of the system and in the basic form, I just put in the IP address. So dot 104 is the pop OS system and we can see that port 22, 80 and 10,000 are open. Looks pretty similar to what I noticed with SS. And yeah, as I can confirm that is SSH, Nginx and Webmin. Now the system ending dot 247 was the Ubuntu system and according to this, all 1000 scanned ports are closed. Although you'll notice that says 1000, not 65535 because Nmap isn't necessarily scanning everything by default. It's only scanning a small range of ports. So I'm going to do a SYN scan and I'm going to specify certain ports because there's that question with port 1716. I'll specify port 1716 and yeah, it's open. <laughs> but what is it doing and how can it be leveraged? Well, besides giving away the fact that it's probably a GNOME based system, I don't think there's really much else I can do with it. I don't know how that can be leveraged remotely, but you know, if you're really concerned about it, then you might want to close that port off with a firewall. But as for the other ports, well, they were UDP ports. So I'm going to have to use dash S capital U. Those are ports 48996, 53, 631, and 5353. Anything open on these? Well, port 53 is closed, well, likely because it received an ICMP response stating that the port was closed. But for the other ports, well, it's not really sure, it says open and filtered, so there's not really much that can be done with that remotely. And there's a selection of UDP ports that had open on Pop! OS. And you can see the contrast here for a port that we definitely know is open for, you know, not NDMP, for Webmin. It states as a fact that it is open, not just filtered. So that is a remotely accessible port. So that is the answer. If you're having services which you want to control the access of remotely and that access could be leveraged remotely, because I'm not convinced that that GNOME application really can be. So yeah, that's the reason you may want to run a firewall, but otherwise for a standard home user with Linux, no, you don't need to. But if you want to run one, then you can. It's your choice. Now, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.